mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. In both of the former hymnal agendas, the Lutheran worship and the Lutheran hymnal, in the baptismal rite, following the baptism of a person, the pastor would bless that person, saying, He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I remember this clearly because I was privileged to have baptized so many people using those two hymnals back early in my ministry. I always thought it was a fitting blessing, a promising thought. That what had just taken place, that is, the birth of a new person into the kingdom of God, was just the beginning. There was more to come. It was like you could say to that person, God's just getting started with you. And that's because he was, and still is. Now our epistle reading for this morning is taken from the beginning of St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Paul had gone there as the first stop in his mission trip to Macedonia. He and Silas wound up being arrested, thrown into jail. When they spoke up of their Roman citizenship, the city rulers apologized for their arrest and kindly asked them to leave town. Now the congregation, which included Lydia and the jailer and his household as well as others, continued to grow and thrive as a mission plant even after the apostles departed. This epistle, unlike many others, does not address a whole bunch of issues, but is rather a thank you for their ongoing support, as well as an encouragement to them to remain steady in their faith. We pick up at verse 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And now I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. That last verse is where that old baptismal blessing comes from. Not an exact translation, at least it's not from the English Standard Version of the Bible we use today, but it still has the same impact. It's still the same message when it follows a person's baptism. God's just getting started with you. Well, Paul speaks to the Philippians out of an abundant confidence of faith. I am sure of this. That Greek word that's translated, I am sure, comes from a Greek word that means to be confident. There's no doubt on Paul's mind. He's absolutely sure of what he's writing to the Philippians. When he thinks about this congregation, from its origins as a mission plant that Paul hadn't even considered doing until God told him to go, to their ongoing partnership in the gospel and all the support that they had given him, Paul is confident that God is at work, just as he's always been at work among them. A few may, uh, verses past this morning's reading, the apostle tells them, and most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. He later goes on to say, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith so that in me you have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. These are some bold words from a man sitting in prison. Paul's confidence is based upon his faith and his observation at God's hand at work. His is a confidence in the Lord. A certainty that life does not find its focus in human abilities or human achievements, just as he will later tell them, for we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. The confidence he expresses here about the church of Philippi, he is sure of because he is confident in God who is at work in the church. Even as he tells them, it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. 
It is in his inspired, faith-filled confidence in God that Paul tells them that he who began a good work in you will bring it com to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. What God starts is described by Paul as a good work, a phrase that is connected to the redeeming work of Jesus, whose sacrificial death on the cross secures our release from the clutches of sin, death, and hell. But it is especially a good work in Paul's eyes in that it, can, it is connected to the Philippians' partnership with him in the gospel. By their prayers and their material support, the Philippian church gave Paul the resources that he needed to be able to continue his mission of preaching the good news of Jesus throughout Macedonia and even on to Rome. It's a good work that God began. This partnership was something that God initiated and which he alone can bring to completion. God elects to speak his word to humankind through the testimony of men, his called out, sent out believers. What God starts in us, he intends to complete through us at the day of Jesus Christ. As the Philippians were called by God and sent out on his mission, we also are a called out and sent out set of believers as the Holy Spirit works in and among us with God's grace. Luther explains the work of the Spirit teaching us in his small catechism, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. The same Spirit who began his work in the hearts and the minds of the Philippians continues to bring believers into the ongoing partnership in the gospel that we have yet today. What God began then he continues to begin and continue in us even today. Luther goes in deeper detail in his large chism, telling them, neither you nor I could ever know anything about Christ or believe on him or have him for our Lord unless it was offered to us and granted to our hearts by the Holy Spirit through the preaching of the gospel. Reflecting what Paul tells the Galatians, because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. Luther then continues, the work of redemption is done and accomplished. Christ has acquired and gained the treasure for us by his suffering, death, resurrection, and so on. But if the work remained concealed so that no one knew about it, then it would be useless and lost. So that this treasure might not stay buried but be received and enjoyed, God has caused the word to go forth and be proclaimed. In the word, he has the Holy Spirit bring this treasure home and make it our own. Therefore, sanctifying is just bringing us to Christ. So we receive this good, which we could not get ourselves. End quote. We continue to be church and to do church as Christ's partners in the gospel, weekly sharing in the word and sacrament to build up one another even as we ourselves are being built up by God through his spirit's dwelling and working in and among us. That's why we strive to keep the doors of this and other congregations open for the sake of any who may venture in either at God's invitation or ours. God has called us together to be his church with an ultimate end already in mind. For what God creates, he brings to completion. The prophet Isaiah reminds us, thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and its Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and the last. Besides me, there is no other God. Fear not, and nor be afraid. God calls the community of faith, and he stands at the end of that calling 
to bring each person to the goal of their faith, that is, the salvation of their souls. Even as he promises us through Paul, who says, The Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. God began a good work in the hearts of the Philippians, certainly not in order to end it, have it end in nothing, but to bring to it full completion up to the day of Jesus Christ. All that God had begun in them was a good work because God begun it. Because it was God's work from the beginning to the end. Everything done by his hand. And God begins his work with his desired end in mind. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Dear friends, I know that it'd be so easy to want to just throw our arms up in the air and throw in the towel and give up. While we may feel that everything good that has happened at Augustana is probably in the past, we should never despair of what God can do and will do in the future of our congregation. What God began with the people who lived in this area back in 1905 is going to be completed, designed as it was meant to be done. Because what God has begun will be completed. It may not look like it once did or even as it currently does, just as the Philippian church doesn't exist in the way it did in Paul's day. But the partnership in the gospel that Paul thanked God for in his prayers for the Philippians continues today, wherever and whenever God's word is taught in its truth and its purity and his sacraments are rightly administered according to that word. God will accomplish what he has set out to do. The proclamation of his gospel to the joy and salvation of people that he calls and gathers into his church here in time and there in eternity. I do not believe our time is coming to an end. Ministry may look different from the past, but God is faithful to us and we need to be faithful, continue to be faithful to him because God who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen.